Hello, I'm Nick with Triplet Test Coming Tools. Today I'm going to be talking about the new LV Pro series. So we have a new LV Pro out. We've had um, it just came out just a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm going to go over some of the differences that we have between this one and the, and the previous one that we have, and uh, go through a lot of the different test functions that we have with the LV Pro. So as I open up the main case here, you can see that the new LV Pro looks a lot different. You can see that it's in a dark red with a uh, dark gray exterior, as opposed to the light gray and the yellow. Um, one of the other features you're going to notice that uh, in a few moments is that it has a backlit display and I'll go over that in a little bit But let me show you what else comes in the package. So you get the carrying case You still get the uh, USB cable to use with the LV Pro management software. You also get two patch cords of RJ45 um, Two RJ45 to alligator clip adapters Which will be helpful on a few tests that we show as for the new LV Pro 30, this is the Model 30 that I will be showing off today. There's an LV Pro 20 and a 30SR. The 20 is very similar to the Model 2 if you're familiar with it. The 30SR is very familiar to the 3SR, except for some of the differences I'm going to show you throughout this, throughout this video. With the 30 and the 30SR, you get um, the pack of 10 RJ45 ID remotes. So if you need to ID, um, so you can do labeling on RJ45 installations, you can use these. Also, you get the 10 coax um, ID remotes as well. And with all the LV Pros, the 20, the 30, and the 30SR, you now get the um, adapters for uh, BNC testing. So uh, you got a, a BNC female to a coax F male, a BNC male to coax F male as well. So that comes with the 20, 30, and the 30SR. And also, obviously, you still get the RLQ adapters for doing quality tests on uh, various types of cables. So that comes with the, the package with the LV Pro 30. And um, as I said earlier, some of the additional features that you get with the new unit is this backlit display, which I'll show you in a second as soon as it starts up. And uh, the way that you turn it on is that you press the um, exit button on, on the bottom of the unit and you press up and as you press up you can probably see the different levels of brightness of the backlit display making it a lot easier to see as some of you may be able to see at the cameras that the backlight helps a lot to see a lot of different tests that are on the LV Pro. So besides the ability to have this nice backlit display now, well, what are some of the other features that the new LV Pro series, the Model 20, 30, and 30SR can do? Well the main thing is, um, is this ability to snap on modules. Now as I take off the back cover, you can easily see there's a little RJ11 cable right here. This cable right here is supposed to connect to a module that's actually going to snap on the back of the unit. And with that module, we have, we're going to have a few different modules come available. Our first one will be our video test module out later this year. And what that video test module will be, taught, will be able to do is do a variety of HDMI and coax cable tests that go beyond the LV Pro. I'll, I'll get into those um, different features when those models come out and available. But for now, um, we're just going to go over the, uh, all the different tests that the LV Pro can do. So one of the first tests we're going to be able to do is I'm going to get a little bit closer to the camera so I can actually show this to you, is I'm going to do the um, RJ45 data test. The uh, LV Pro, as you might be able to see, has all these different um, categories of um, testing that you can do that. If you're familiar with the LV Pro 1, 2, or 3, or 3SR, you'll be familiar with the menu system. Very, very similar. So the first test I'm going to do is this um, data RJ45. I'm going to actually going to measure a cable length of an RJ45 cable. So I got my, um, I have a patch cord here. I'm just going to measure with the LV Pro. I'm going to take off the adapter off the bottom, plug that in on the other end. So plug in, and I'll plug that in on the top of my LV Pro. I'm going to press OK. The hammer's going, indicating that the test is running. And if you guys can see that, I did the testing on pairs one, two, and it's telling me that this cable's three feet long. So that's easy to know. So if you need to know how long cable is with RJ45, just easily plug and play, and I'll let you know. And as you can see, the hammer's still going, indicating that test is continuous. So if I unplug this, if I unplug the cable at the top, I'll eventually get um, zero feet in a little bit, as you can see there. So what else can I do besides that? Well, on that same cable, let's do an additional test. It's called the cable test as you guys can see it flashing now and the cable test is going to be able to tell you the cable length and it's going to be able to tell you um, the properties of the cable if all eight pairs are lined up properly the skew the ohms the delay and what the uh, LV Pro 30 and the 30 SR you'll be able to save those test results up to 250 to this device and print them through the LV Pro management software so you can show them later 
So I, again, using the same cable as I just did, I'm gonna plug that in right at the top. I'm gonna press OK on my cable test. So it says again, the cable's three feet, that it passed, and as you guys can see, all the pins are lined up. And the hammer's going continuously, telling me that the test is running, is running. If I press the, um, if I press the key on the side here, the hourglass key, it'll tell me some more information about my cable. So I'll press down, and it'll tell me the length on each pair. So I got three feet on pair th uh, four, five, and pair seven, eight. I got the skew on here as well. I got the um, delay on here as well, and I got the ohms of each of each pair as well. So that can be very helpful information if you're trying to diagnose a cable. So that's really that's really great that you're able to see that all in this. And like I said before, you can save this all to one to test result, um, so you can um, review these later or hand them out to your client if you need to. So what's some of the other tests you can do on the uh, data RJ45 side? Well, I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to unplug this. So I'm going to put my remote back into my. Uh, back into my unit, I'm going to go back to my seat and I'll show you some of the other things that I can do. So the uh, first test just below the cable test is one called, um, it looks like an eyeball, it's called the port blink. So I have a little switch right here, a little four or five port switch, I have my RJ45 cable coming out of it and I'm going to plug it into the LV Pro and the LV Pro is going to tell me where this cable is hooked up on the switch by flashing one of the LEDs on the front of the unit. So I'm going to plug that in to my unit. I'm going to go down to the eyeball. I'm going to press OK. It's going to send the information on pair 1, 2, and 3, and 6. And as I look on here, it's actually going to be flashing LED. So as you can see, the test is working. And if you look on pair 1, you'll see the LED flash momentarily. And that will indicate to you where the cable is hooked up on this switch. So very helpful information on here. So you can actually easily identify it. And you can do that with um, wire tracers. But wire tracers are not going to have the ability to um, tell you exactly what port it is because the sound sometimes gets filtered out through the switches. So what else can I do on here while I'm connected to this switch? Well, there is a um, there's an icon on there for a network. I'm going to press that, press OK, see what information we find out there. Well, this is going to tell me all the different information about this switch that I'm hooked up to. It's going to tell me that's a 10 100, 1000 switch, that the information is coming on pair 3612 and that it's half and full duplex. So that's really good information. And the activity lights at the top telling me that there is a link, that it is connected. So what else can I do on here? So let me press exit. There's a PoE. So if I press OK on the PoE, press it again, now it's actually going to measure the PoE voltage that's coming across here. And it's going to light up the volts light at the top, indicating that there's power coming across. So now I can easily tell that my system is running 48.4 volts through here right now. Well, if you had a camera that maybe that's is going down constantly, it's having issues, you can use this to monitor because, as you can see, it's live monitoring that uh, power current right now. And you can see if there's something going on with that switch that's not making that camera run properly. So that's all the different tests you could do with the RJ45 um, connector. There's also some I'll be able to show you in a little bit show you over in a second, but that's all the different stuff you can do with the data RJ45. As I exit out here, I'll go over to the speaker and alarm. The speaker alarm testing is mostly done with the um, alligator clip to um, RJ45 adapter, and that allows you to do any, connect to any two pair cable that you may have here. So you can see it's just a very standard RJ45 to alligator clip adapter. And you plug it right into the unit and you'd be able to connect to any two pair cable to do a variety of tests. Some of the tests you can do, as you guys can see, is um, you can do a length test. So if you have a, um, if you have speaker wire they need to measure the length of or any type of two pair cable, you can do that easily. Also, with all the lengths, you can calibrate them. Um, we have them set to standards that are normal in the industry, but if your cable has a different VOP, you can easily go over to the calibration section of the unit and uh, change that if you need to. One of the other things you can do is a cable test. It'll measure the, um, the length and it'll tell you the, uh, if it passes open shorts or whatever on, uh, on a two pair cable. And we also got a speaker pop right underneath that. That's another test you can do. So I have, um, a speaker right here, just a traditional speaker. And the reason why you'd want to do this test is that it would help you if you have multiple speakers in a room and you're trying to easily identify what speaker that is. So I'm going to plug this speaker right into my LV Pro. As I press OK, you hear a speaker pop. 
that easily tells me that that speaker is located right here. If we had multiple speakers in the room, I'd be easily able to identify where that speaker location is. So move down, the next test is our Adobe 7.1 surround sound test. We sell separate remotes that work with that, and that's so you can easily identify what speakers are going to what if you're doing a surround sound system and they're not labeled properly. The last test we got on the speaker alarm is actually a battery test. You use, again, the alligator clip to RJ45 adapter. You can use this to connect you right directly to a battery and test that. So say you have a 12 volt alarm battery that, is, um, that you're not sure if it's giving you issues or not, plug it in, you connect the connectors to the positive and negative, and you press OK, this will put a 250 milliamp load on there that actually tests the battery while it's running. So you can easily tell if that battery is running properly. So if that 12 volts drop maybe to 8 volts, you can easily tell that that battery needs replacing. Just finished with my speaker alarm test. As I move on to the video coax, video coax, I'll be able to do, if I have a coax cable, I'll be able to measure the cable length on that coax, and I'll be able to do a cable test and make sure the ohms, the skew, and the delay are proper, and that there's no opens or shorts or reverse on there. And it'll give me an easily pass-fail, just like you saw in RJ45. The other test you can do on here is the uh, VPP test. Now it's the uh, volts coming across the uh, BNC cable. If I can measure that, that easily lets me know that the cable's working properly, or the camera's working properly for analog camera. So I have my little analog camera here and I have a BNC cable here. Let's see if this camera is running properly because many of us know that you need 1.1 volts coming across this BNC cable line for that camera to work properly or at least indicating that it's working properly and for that DVR to start recording. So I'm going to use one of the adapters that comes with the uh, LV Pro kit. I'm going to plug that in, screw that in right into the top of the tester. So that's nice and secure. Try to see if I can bring this a little bit closer for you guys to see. I'm going to press OK, and it's actually going to measure the voltage. And right now it says 1.6 volts, 1.66 volts coming across. So that's telling me that there's enough voltage coming across this BNC that this camera is actually working properly. It won't allow me to view the camera what it sees, but it's telling me that there's an electrical current that's the proper, um, proper um, strength coming across the BNC cable line to indicate that this camera is working properly. So if a camera wasn't working properly, you would see it under one volt or you wouldn't see anything. And that would indicate to me that maybe the power supply or something within the camera is not working properly. So let me exit out of that. The last section of the uh, RJ um, LV Pro and all the different tests you can do is the RJ11 voice and data testing. You can do cable length, you can do a full cable map, you can test telephone line voltage. So I got a, a bad, I'm pretty sure a bad, uh, telephone line cable right here that I'm going to test. So first I'm going to test the uh, the cable length on there. So I'm going to plug it right here at the top. And I got the remote here. I'll plug that in on the other end. So you can see I got a decent spool of cable right here. I'm going to press OK on my length. And it's going to do the measurement. And look, what does it say? It says that on pair 2.5 it's only 4 feet. Well that doesn't make sense. It looks like I got a lot more 4 feet here. So let me exit out of here. And let me do the cable test. So the cable test is going to tell us a little bit more information. Well, it says pair four, pair uh, one of the pairs has four feet on it, and that pair one six are failing and they're not connected properly. But pair three four is fine. So let me uh, let me go into the hourglass and see what's going on. Pair three four actually has 26 feet on there, and pair two five is only four feet. So there's some type of cut or splice in there. So that tells me that there's something going on. And you can see the skew, the ohms, and the delay. And you can see that the uh, the ohms are, are just out of are just out of this um, out of the realm of what it's possible for this cable. And as you can see, that there's a difference in ohms depending on um, which pair you're looking at. The broken pair is definitely way off. So that's really interesting to know. So you can see that the LV Pro is telling us that it measures the length on two of the pairs that are four feet. The other pair it's measuring a lot further, and that cable part of the cable is fine. But the four feet pass of the cable is failing because it's open. So that means there must be a cut or somewhere in the cable. And like I said, the last thing you can do on here is the um, voltage test with RJ40, uh, RJ11. So if you actually have um, a telephone line that you need to test, you can easily measure the voltage on there. So that's a quick showing of all the different tests and functions that the uh, new LV Pros can do. Um, the di distinctions between the 2030 and the 30SR is that the 20 doesn't really have a lot of the PoE testing that I was showing you earlier, and it doesn't have um, a lot of the volts testing like um, the alarm test or the uh, telephone line test or the um, 
the analog camera test voltage and it can't save all the reports. So um, there's some differences there. Also the 20 does not come with the additional adapters or remotes that the 30 does and the 30SR does. Um, with the 30SR, um, the big thing you get is um, you get the same thing that comes with the 30 as I've been showing you, but you get these things called smart remotes. Um, they're little yellow remotes and they're, they're great for um, working on RJ45 cables. They actually act like multiples of these, but they're also numbered. So you can easily map out eight cables at once. So I'm gonna plug this in. As you can see, this is number five remote. I'm gonna switch over here to the RJ45 data. I'm gonna press okay on my cable test. It's telling me that, it's, that it passed and that if I press the cable ID button, it's gonna tell me that's remote five. If I just had, if I was just using the included remotes, these ones are just numbered. This one would just tell me that, that it's cable five. This one will also run a full cable test on there, something that doesn't usually come available on ID remote. So these are really helpful if you wanna do multiple installations or multiple sections at once, instead of just going one to one, one to one with the, uh, with the remote that main remote that's included. So that's all the different test functions with the uh, LV Pro and all the different models that we have currently available. If you have any questions about the new LV Pro series, please visit our website, www.triplet.com, or visit us on our Facebook page to check out some of our latest discussions. Thank you for watching this video.